Yo guys, what's up? Jester here. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a CC, or how I make mine at least. Hit the sub button if you haven't already. It helps me out a lot. And let's get right into this video. So I have this edit here I made. It's mainly just sink and shakes. And let me show you it real quick. One thing I'd like you to notice is that it doesn't have color correction on it. And I'm going to be showing you guys how to make that in this video. So first things first, hit Control alt y make an adjustment layer and put it above everything. And basically what an adjustment layer does is it affects everything under it. So any effect that we put on this adjustment layer, it's going to affect our main comp. Or in this case, my name. I've adjusted my workspace to make it easier for you guys to follow along and see what I choose and put on my adjustment layer. So let's start off by getting looks. We're going to drag this on like three times. And from there, we're going to get a photo filter. Drag one of those on at the very top. And from there, we're going to get curves, put it at the very bottom. And then once you have all this stuff on, we're going to minimize all of them and then turn the effects off so we can't see them. So we're going to start with looks, the first one right here. Mainly what I do is I click edit. And then from here, I go to color film stock. Now these are all the films that I recommend using. They're really easy to play with and it just makes and it just makes making a CC a whole lot easier. So we're going to look through these and we're going to determine which one fits our song the best. So I'd say the song has a more colorful feel. So maybe something like this or even like this. This one's just a bit brighter. And yeah, this one looks good. So I'm going to click it and then I'm going to go down here to the check mark to apply it. As you can see, it applied it. All we're going to do is just adjust the strength of it because I feel like it's just a bit too much. I'm going to put it to like 75, just dim it down a bit. Get rid of some of the darks and yeah then we'll go on to our second looks so turn on the second one and then go to edit for that one now one thing that i do i know it's a bit weird is i mix films so now that we had that one i'm gonna go to another one that's just a complete different color maybe one that even has more color like this one i'm gonna click it click the check mark and now we have two films on the video i'm gonna turn this down to about like 20 and yeah now we get even more of a film look so far we just have film on our adjustment layer so I'm going to turn it on and off so you can see. So yeah, that's what I base my adjustment layers off of. Uh, one thing that I'm noticing is that the top looks right here is a bit too harsh. So I'm going to put that maybe to 60, turn it down even more. And then from there, we can go into look three, uh, click edit. And then we can go into any of these other preset menus and we can choose a random crazy color preset. I recommend staying away from like these flares because these never really look good. So stay away from those. I'm going to go into color play and let's click. Let's click this one. It looks kind of cool. You can see the saturation marks. That looks kind of cool. So I'm going to click the check mark and now I have that on it. Turn it down a bit. And now we got that little bit of, now we have a little bit of greenness to it. I think that looks cool. So now we can go to curves and then I'll show you how this works too. So basically how I explain curves is I make three dots on the graph right here. And then from here, these are your low ends, like your darks. And then I refer to this as a high end and this is like the lighter stuff in the background. So yeah, basically an easier way to think about this is just, this is like your hands and the gun kind of, and then this is like the sky and stuff to fit this song in particular. I'm just going to make the low ends a bit higher. Feel free to add as many dots as you want to get the perfect color correction. And then what I'm going to do is take the high ends and make them a bit lower, kind of match them up a bit. Something like this is good. Kind of just makes the image look a bit more flat. I know it kind of defeats the purpose of having film, but uh, this will add up together for the end result. What I'm going to do now is drag on another curves under that one. But this time we're going to be adjusting red, green, and blue. Different curves. So if I want my CC to be green, I'd be adjusting green. If you want it to be more blue, then adjust blue. And then red, you can adjust red. But I want my CC to be a bit more green. So what we're going to do is put three points again. And then you can just play with the coloring yourself. Depends what you want to do. Maybe if you want to go for something like this, you can. Or even like this. I know it's kind of edgy. So yeah, curves gives you a lot of options. I'm going to be turning it down a little bit at the low ends and then up a bit at the high ends. So now I have this bit of a color curve. Kind of brings the film back a bit more. But this time we just brought green into the equation a lot more. Now we can go and edit our photo filter. So yeah, turn that on. It's going to be default warming filter. 85, but you can go ahead and do custom colors if you want. Like let's say if I want a red photo filter, put on red, bam. It's kind of like a tint, but it works better than a tint. So I'm going to spend some time looking through this and see which one I end up choosing. 
Now, I think violet looks pretty cool with this density of 17. Uh, you can choose whatever you want, mix and match any colors you want to. And yeah, now we can move on to the next step of our CC. So what I like adding on my CC is BCC Tritone. BCC Tritone can be used for a lot of things, but one thing that I like to do the most is uh, change this midpoint color to white. And then from there, I play with the midpoint and I select the darkest parts of the video, as you can see, like this. And then you change the black color to red and then mix with original, you can play with that. And then as you can see, gives you that red tint as you play with the midpoint then you can also go down here and play with the repeats and uh if i mix with original at zero you can see what that does just makes it look a bit more edgy selects more things and that could also add onto your cc effects wise but i like to leave my repeats at one but uh yeah that's what i do with bcc tritone now we can move on to the next thing which normally would be find edges so find edges is a really cool effect what you can do is invert it and then put the Blend with original to like 92. What's gonna do is give you that like faded kind of look. And yeah, you can you can see it for yourself as I turn this on and off. And from here we can also do arithmetic. I know that's a cool effect to use, so I'm gonna put that on. Uh yeah, this speaks for itself <laughs> when I put it on. It's kind of like all over the place. It gives you that edgy effect when you're on XOR, or you can even go to add and use it for like coloring, kind of like a photo filter. As you can see, it's kind of like tinting. So yeah, we can actually use add and then put it up to maybe four. Put it up to maybe six right there. And you see we get kind of a blue tint going on. So now we can play with color balance. So go ahead and add that on. What I like to do with BC color balance is pull out specific colors that I like to shine the most. So for this edit, I'm going to pull out green just a little bit. And now we get that little green tint going on on our CC. So yeah, this looks like a lot of stuff. But as you can see, it's pretty easy to follow along and do. But uh, the next thing that I like to put on my CCs is Glow. Normally I just use the normal S Glow, so I'm going to drag that on. And then, yeah, you can play with your brightness right here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and leave that at like 1 for now. And then also you can play with Threshold. So Threshold basically like selects where it glows from, as you can see how I play with this. So I just like it to go in the sky. And then I like making this a bit bigger to make it like a softer glow. And then from there we can just turn down the brightness slowly and slowly. And then turn it off and on to see how bright we're actually making things because you never want to be too bright and like blind your audience so yeah that's all i really do with glow you can mess with all these other settings down here but i tend to only use threshold color and brightness and then for color we can also go in here and make it kind of a light blue glow i think that looks clean so if we turn it off and on here you can see that it's kind of tinted blue so i'm going to go ahead and drag on another curves from here because i feel like we could touch up some things and contrast other things so what we're going to do is make another three points and then I can bring down these lower ends right here and then maybe bring up the higher ends. Now we got a little bit of contrast going on and then we can minimize that. Another cool thing I like to put on my CCs is uh, chromatic aberration. So we're going to type in uni chromatic aberration. This is really cool. I recommend universe. So uh, what we're going to do is turn these both down and then put master distortation 0.1 at master scale to 0.1 as well. And then we're going to go into the blur settings down here and turn this all off because I think blur looks nasty. What we're going to do now is change the red scale. So if we zoom in right here, actually like testing this on the HUD, you can actually see how much of the red you're bringing out. So that's exaggerated. But I like having these like little colors shine out of nowhere. Kind of just adds more to the CC. So you can play with the red scale, green scale, and blue scale and just drag out random colors like this. I think it looks cool. Kind of adds more color into the CC and more like effect. So yeah, I'm just going to play with this now and see what I get. So now I have these like pinkish green edges on my CC right here, as you can see. I think it looks cool. It adds on to the CC a bit. And yeah, that's that. So from there, if you guys want to have like a warped screen as a CC, you can also type in optics compensation. Sometimes I'll put this on my CCs to add effect, but you want to click this little reverse lens distortion box right here. Check this and then up the field of view just a little bit just to have that like curved screen. So yeah, I'd say... Don't go past 10. Maybe 10 is perfect. And yeah, now you got that like little warp just to add effect. And yeah, our CC is looking pretty good now. Some things that you must have on your CC is sharpen, unsharp mask, and uh, we can go with S grain. S grain is also another good thing that I like putting on all my CCs. So yeah, let's start with that. So I'm going to add sharpen on, unsharp mask right here, and then S grain after that. And let's turn them all off for now. And then for lighting, I like using levels at the very end. So let's drag this on too. So for sharpen, what you want to do is turn that on. Normally my sharpen amount will be like 15. 
So a way that you can test your sharpen amount is by zooming in. You can just like scroll it up a little bit. I'd say don't go past like 25 at most maybe. Uh, I'm just going to stick with 15 because that's kind of my safe number for sharpen. And then unsharp mask, what I do is I change my amount. I put it to like 6 and then I change my radius to 5. And then, uh, yeah, those are my sharpen settings right there. So after that, what you want to do is turn on S-Grain. Uh, I like to turn my color amplitude up to see what I'm working with. And I like to turn up my color frequency so I can have smaller grain. So you should do that too. And then also you can change your red frequency. You can change the colors of your grain. I actually just leave it default like this. And then I just turn my color amplitude back down. And then zoom in so I can like see how much grain is going into my video. But yeah. I'd say something around... I'd say 0 0.07 is my safe number for grain. Uh, I think it looks kind of nice. And yeah, we can minimize this now. Now with levels, what you guys want to do is uh, turn this on, open the drop down menu, and play with this little triangle in the middle. If you put it to the right, it's going to get darker. If you put it to the left, it's going to get brighter. Also, if you put this triangle on the left to the right, it's going to contrast your clip a bit more. So I like to turn that a bit to the right. And then uh, with this triangle, normally you want to put it to the left, but it depends on how bright your video actually is. So you can test this by going to different frames and looking around to see how bright everything is just so you can get that perfect white balance so i'm actually going to go for a bit darker because of how bright this clip is as you guys can see my cc is looking pretty good and uh now we can go ahead and revise everything and what i mean by that is uh look through frames of your look through frames of your edit and see if things are too bright or too dark and then go back and adjust things to make it brighter or darker so as you can see the film right here well, I'd say is the film because that's what makes things dark in the first place. Uh, it looks a bit dark. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and turn down this look strength percentage down, maybe 40. And you can see it got rid of how dark it was. So this is without film. This is with it back on. Uh, you can even turn it down a bit more because we are using two films and like mixing them. So yeah. So from there, I'd say my CC is pretty much complete. Another thing that you should always do with your CCs is uh, add RSMB, but I don't like to add RSMB on the adjustment layer. I like to add it on the actual comp itself, so normally I'll go and comp the whole edit and then uh, I'll put RSMB on it separately. This increases render time and yeah, who doesn't want faster render time? So with my RSMB settings for this edit in specific, I went pretty hard with it. I did 0 0.24 and 82. Uh, RSMB settings that are my go-to numbers are 0 0.21 and 80. Uh, you can play around with this and get the perfect motion blur for yourself. But now I'm gonna RAM preview and play the edit for you guys so you can see how the CC ended up being and seeing how it fit with the song. A tip I'd like to share with you guys is that when I make my CCs, I listen to the song that I'm editing to on repeat just so I can get the perfect colors and get the overall feeling of the song and translate it into colors. This color correction is pretty close to my FK edit if you haven't seen it already. I got a lot of compliments on that CC so I thought I'd make something like that for this video. I'm going to be leaving the preset to the CC in the description so be sure to go check it out. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed. Hit the sub button if you haven't already. It really helps me out. And uh... I'll see you guys in the next one.